Okay. Well, I don't see us popping up on Facebook yet, but um, Zoom says we are live. So uh, let me just say good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill's World Bible School, and welcome to Friday Morning Conversations. Uh, today, my guest is Pastor Paul Gray, and we have a great series uh, planned for you. Good morning, Pastor Paul. How are you? I'm great, Dr. Bill. Good to see you. Yeah, and uh, it's amazing that you're just about three hours from me, and uh, uh, so we're 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 close by. So we uh, are. We got to get together in person. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. So anyway, uh, good morning, everyone, and just uh, get your uh, your Bible or a notebook, or just uh, just listen. Get a cup of coffee, tea, uh, whatever your morning. Uh, uh, thing is, and we're going to get started today. We're talking about, uh, really, I'm not sure I titled this right, but uh, really we're talking about freedom from darkness within because so many people deal with darkness in their thinking. And, you know, we're always looking for the darkness that's in the world around us. But in reality, because uh, a lot of people are saying these are dark times. And, you know, I was watching the recent TV commercials, uh, uh, Return to Return to God. Um, and I told my wife, and I talked about this on my show uh, last Wednesday on Take Another Look. I, uh, it's, uh, the scriptures did say in the Old Testament, return to God and I will return to you. And I thought, what a, about, what a condition from God that the old covenant um, minister, ministerial groups had this mindset of God, that God don't want anything to do with you unless you first have something to do with him, which is a complete uh, contradiction from original creation and, and how God created us in him and of him and so on. So uh, let's just kick this off this morning. I just want to give this one scripture, and I've only uh, really planned this one scripture. I know you've got some places to go, but First John 1, 5 in the New King James, and I've got it also in the mirror, and we'll look at it as many places as we need to. It says, this is the message which we have heard from him. And I love that because there's so many messages going out there that we're paying attention to, but this is the message we've heard from him yeah. uh, and <clears throat> declare to you. So it's good that we declare the same message that we've heard from God. The thing is, is you got to hear his message and understand his message. And here's the message that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. What's John talking about here, pastor? <clears throat> well, I, I would, uh, I'm sure we'll go into it much more deeper than this, but I believe he's talking about there's no darkness in God. And it, it'd only taken me 73 years to, to start to grasp that. But it's, it's fascinating as I've, what the Lord's been showing me about that, Dr. Bill, is uh, John wrote that, we believe, when he was 90 years old. That mm -hmm. was after uh, spending three and a half years, 24 7 uh, every day with John. Jesus, listening to him, being taught by him, seeing who he was, seeing what he did. And then, of course, uh, experiencing the finished work of Jesus at the cross, experiencing that firsthand, and then spending another 55 years of his life uh, being in fellowship and communion, not only with Jesus, but with the Father and the Holy Spirit <clears throat> living mm -hmm. in him. And as I understand it from church history, when John was like 90 years old, uh, the people uh, around him uh, th they obviously knew he was he was probably the only person left who was still alive when uh, Jesus died mm -hmm. <clears throat> because people just didn't live that long then I'm, I'm sure there could have been some others but he was the one who knew him and so they asked him they said look uh, I doubt if they said it this crassly but they're basically they're saying look you're not going to be here much longer so net it out for us tell us tell us the basics of what Jesus was all about. And so it appears to me that that's what he did in, in 1 John 1. He said, this is, this is the message. Uh, I think the uh, Passion Translation says, this is the essence of the message. Uh, here's what we heard from Jesus. We're going to net it all out. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. And Bill, as you just mentioned a little while ago, in the Old Covenant, in the, in the Hebrew Scriptures, they taught, well, uh, you know, 
God doesn't really want to be around you, but if you'll return to him and do things just right and everything, <clears throat> then he'll, he'll barely tolerate you. Well, yeah. you know, Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty seven, 27, he said, look, in essence, he said, I love you all, but none of you knows the father. None of you know me. I mean, you don't, you don't have a clue of what God is like. We're not distant. We're not, uh, we're not somewhere off keeping a record of your wrongs. We're not just waiting for you to come to us. No, we're, we're here. We're actually not only with you, but we're in you. And then to net it all out, he said, no matter what you've thought of God before, there's no darkness in him at all. He's mm -hmm. pure light. And, and you mentioned them in your study on this, that the darkness comes from the Greek word, Scotea, uh, which is used as a metaphor pertaining to the ignorance of divine things. And that's where everybody was when Jesus came. Everybody was in the dark. Nobody had a clue of who God really is. Now, we've, we've learned from the apostles, uh, primarily from, from the apostle Paul and from John and from others, but still not everybody knows. There's still great ignorance of divine things and i i just i'm so excited to be part of this worldwide movement of god revealing that there is no darkness in god he's pure for sure. light for sure yeah and and you know the amazing thing is is that people still think after an old covenant mindset and you know what i have discovered is that when we have um eternity past and there's a lot of scriptures that allude to a pre not a pre-creation but a but a, a time before time uh, john teaches and we see that god created man in his own image now the word man there in genesis 126 is uh, adam which means mankind as an individual or a species and um and then when we get to adam in chapter two uh, it no longer uses the word man, but uses the word Adam, and it's actually uh, the uh, Hebrew word Adam, and it means Adam the man. And so Adam the man took on a mindset of darkness. And so from Genesis chapter 2 all the way to the end of Revelation chapter 20, we have the darkness of mankind, a lot of that displayed in scripture, not all of scripture, but a great majority of scripture. And so the concepts we see, you know, and as I mentioned, the TV commercials that are going about these days, I, I've been watching a couple of different ones, and I don't want to mention names, but the thing is, is that we've got this idea that if we can shake everybody up and get them to repent uh, without understanding what repentance is or understanding what sin is defined as in the Greek and so on, that we're going to get people to return to God. And that way, now God's going to come. God's going to bless our nation. He's going to bless the world. And, you know, it's, it's back to the law, the mindset of the law, that if we perform, then God will perform. But there is no so, such truth in the heart or the mind of our Father, uh, because those thoughts would be thoughts of darkness and there is no darkness at all in him and that was the message that was being preached and and so i just love that i thank you for bringing that up the the greek word there um and and i love i love learning to enunciate greek and hebrew words and you did that so perfectly uh a metaphor pertaining to ignorance of divine things and when we believe there is separation from our father when we believe there's any any element of of darkness whatever darkness would represent in this case ignorance of divine things then that's exactly where we're operating so we see that in our world around us but but the world around us is not supposed to be the focus that we have um you know for me, it's not what uh, uh, the focus is not what's going on around us, but it's on the eternal Christ within. And one of the things that has blessed my life is learning to uh, reinterpret the scripture that the modern scriptures that we have. For example, when the scripture says that God so loved the world, I always interject whole world. Uh, because it is the whole world that God loves, not just the, the chosen few. And when the Bible said that, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, I always interject that he was reconciling the whole world to himself. Or he was bringing up, re, uh, the Passion Translation says he was reconnecting our mind to his. And, uh, uh, and so that's so important to me to understand that uh, God is pure light. 
and there's no trace. I, I, I one translation said there's no trace. Of, I think it was the passion. No trace of darkness in him at all, and so pure light. And so if we can be, and, and I, I see on your wall there, uh, pure light walker. Um, what is that about? And how does that relate to what we're talking about today? Well, thanks for asking, <clears throat> Dr. Bill. Uh, <clears throat> as you well know, going on and <clears throat> excuse me, in, in uh, 1 John chapter 1, a mm -hmm. uh, couple of verses later, John uh, says, uh, well, traditional translations say, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then uh, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. Well, mm -hmm. uh, it, I, I won't go into uh, what I believe is an incorrect translation of if there. He's, he's already done that, of course. But walking in the light, uh, there, there's so many references to light in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And as, as we know, uh, there are a lot of things in in the Old Testament that are true and representative about God is it says the writer of Hebrews says in, in Hebrews chapter one, uh, in, in the former days, God <clears throat> spoke to us in bits and pieces mm -hmm. uh, through the, uh, the prophets and the other writers, but none of them had the full picture. Of course, they, they got some things right. And certainly God is light. Uh, God is true. God is good. Uh, some of those things they got right. But until Jesus came, you know, we didn't have a clear picture. And there are Old uh, Testament scriptures that say God is good. And uh, in the evangelical world, we've said, well, God is good all the time. Mm -hmm. We say that. And then we go right around and say, but he's not good <laughs> unless and until we do this or that. And I, I was taught growing up that, <clears throat> well, it's up to me to walk in the light. And when I walk in the light, <clears throat> then God's going to be pleased with me. Then he's going to bless me. Then he's going to forgive me. Then my relationships are going to be good. I, I had a, a mentor, wonderful fellow, uh, for about 27 years. Uh, he was a navigator. Uh and he was a wonderful guy, and, and I, he was well-meaning. I've come to understand now he was misinformed in some ways, but I went to him one time, and I said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm having some troubles with this other person. Uh, can you help me? And he said, well, one or both of you is not walking in the light. Hmm. He said, there's, there's some sin in your life or in the other person's life or in both of your life that you're not walking in the light. Therefore, God can't even hear your prayers, nor will he bless you. Well, I, I took that to heart, and uh, it, it, it drove me down a very dark path, I'll have to yeah. tell you. So I, I'm coming to see, uh, Bill, that if there is no darkness at all in God, yep. that means there's no darkness There's no darkness in his love, in his truth, uh, in, in his joy, in his acceptance, in his forgiveness, in his relationship to us in every possible way. There's, uh, there's just no darkness there. And since he lives in us, there's no darkness in us, except in our minds where we allow there to be, as you so well said, that Adam adopted a, a false uh, mindset, uh, mindset. And there's no darkness, uh, there's no darkness in anybody else either, except in their minds. So oh. when we, when we, uh, when we grasp that and we realize that God is good in every way all the time, not just to us, but to everyone, and that God's light is in everyone and shining out from them, we see that light and it helps us see people as Christ sees them. It helps us see them with no, uh, no separation, no us, them, no exclusion, no in or out, no, uh, well, we got it right because we said the prayer in the right way, or we got it right yeah. because we're born in America, or we got it right because we were baptized in the right church. Uh, all of all of that stuff is is darkness thinking and uh just to uh, just to imagine it's laughable now just to think of god saying well yes i i love you and i am light and i'm good uh and i've forgiven you but if you don't get this baptism thing exactly right which of course is different than the church down the block if you don't get that exactly right 
there's nothing I can do. I'm just going to have to torture you forever. That it's laughable. It, I mean, it, it is laughable. Now it's not laughable if you still believe it, but, <laughs> but it's, it's become laughable to me. So that's just a, a little touch of uh, pure light walking. Well, it, it's it's laughable because we were raised in some of those mindsets, and you know the Bible says in in the Passion translation that that uh, there was a time that we we lived in the the thoughts and actions of our own mind or in the darkness of our own mind. Right. And and the truth is is that that's not a a, a um, um, something we're born with or created with. That's something that we're taught, and. Uh, so yeah, that, that is so true. Now, uh, the mirror Bible says my conversation, which you, uh, which you, uh, with, with you me. flows from the same source, which illuminates this fellowship of union with the father and the son. This then is the essence of the message. God is radiant light. And in him, there exists not even a trace of obscurity or darkness at all. And I love this. Uh, I don't. I don't often use the Mirror Bible uh, commentary or its footnotes, um, but uh, but there are times where it just speaks so loudly. Uh, and this is one of those times. It says, "Without exception, God's gifts are only good. Their perfection cannot be improved upon. They come from above, proceeding like light rays from the source." the father of lights with whom there is no distortion or even a shadow of shifting to obstruct or intercept uh, the light. No hint of any hidden agenda. Man is not the, per uh, the product of his mother's womb. Man began in God. Now, I love that so much because this is something we teach. And I, I remember when you and I first started uh, talking together on um, on a broadcast uh, that one of the things that I told you was I have a, I, I have a, I, I really struggle with the word inclusion, but I have a harder time with the word exclusion. And, <laughs> and sometimes uh, we try to take that, which is truth. And we try to uh, overthink it. Okay, such as God is light, and there's no darkness at all in him. And then scriptures that say nothing can separate us from the love of God, uh, that uh, God is in us. You know, John taught in John chapter 1, verse 4, he taught that the life of, of God is the light of men. Uh, the word light there, I think, is illumination. He, that life is what illuminates us to truth. So we came into this world, as we know, we we took on the form of, the, not the form, but the mind, uh, the thinking of what our peers knew, what they understood as truth, which was that we're separated from God until we pray a sinner's prayer that's not even in the Bible. And, uh, and we, we pray that whatever made it prayer somebody has come up with, and we tell God all of our sins, and we repent with, with tears and great sorrow. And, uh, and then we go around, you know, for, for days and weeks and sometimes years, feeling so bad because of all the things we did in the past, believing that if I just mess up one time, God's going to send me to a burning hell for all eternity to be tormented. And we learn those things because someone in our past history did not properly interpret the mind of God um, and, and understand the father's heart. I, I want to tell you, if a father today, and, and I, was, I was raised with a pretty hard father. He was what was called back in the day, a man's man. Uh, what I mean by that is that if somebody looked at you crooked, uh, he at the drop of a hat, he was ready to fight. He wouldn't back down. He was a tough guy, uh, but he was also a preacher. He was also a husband and a father, uh, a powerful prophet of God. Uh, I knew my dad as a great minister, but my dad also was a very hard man because he was taught that was the way of life. And so be, when you convey uh, a mindset to your wife, or to your children, then somehow we get the idea that that's how God is. So I grew up believing God was this really rough looking guy sitting on a throne with a, a straight face, didn't laugh, um, you know, just this really 
solemn type individual. I grew up believing, even in the early years of ministry, believing that that was who God was and that I had to work really hard to even get a grin out of the corner of God's eye. And, and, and none of that was true. None of that was true, but that's how I grew up because that's what the, how those over me, even my Sunday school teachers, my, my school, I mean, whoever it was, that's how they thought perceived God to be. But when we look at scripture that says God is light and there's no darkness in him at all. Now we have to connect the dots to how does that relate to me? Well, when you see that scripture says, the life of God is the light of men, that man can't even exist without two things. One, the life of God being in him, and two, the light of God, which brings illumination. There's no possible way for anyone in this human form to exist unless you can stop and go back to the truth of the spirit form, which is that I am in God, I am of God, uh, God is the, the source, and I'm of the source, as, as the, the Passion Translation so wonderfully comments on this, that, you know, this source is in me. I'm of this source, so I'm of God. So, so you're right, uh, Pastor. The only thing that is in me that could be any perceived as any form of darkness is my own thoughts, and that's what always has separated mankind from uh, from God or where man has walked in this separation mindset, uh, which was darkness, is because that's what we thought we were supposed to do. We thought we had Adam's sin. We thought we had this, this failed human nature that had to be reborn somehow. And, uh, you know, uh, again, people today that are living in this religious mindset, I just want to say to you, uh, you, you don't have to live that way. You don't have to stay in that. You can walk above that because the truth is, is that the God of all creation, the God of heaven and earth, the God of e all e uh, from eternity past lives in you, always has lived in you. And so once that becomes a revelation to you, you will wake up to some things and you'll begin to say, you know what? God really does love me. He really isn't holding a grudge against me. I have no reason to fear, fear any kind of future. Isn't that what John further says later? He says that perfect love, God's perfect love, casts out all dread, all fear, all need of feeling like that God's mad at me about something. So we really just have had a proper understanding of who God is. Well, that that's exactly right, Bill. So well said. And I, I, <clears throat> what I've uh, it just keep hearing from the Lord over and over again is metanoia, uh, changing our mind, uh, you know, without going into the history of how that word has uh, unfortunately been mistranslated as repent. Yeah. It, it, it just, it means changing our mind. And uh, I've come to understand that, that when Jesus used that word, uh, when, when Paul and, and John Peter, when they used it, I believe they they meant change your mind about what you thought God is like. Mm -hmm. Change your mind about who you think you are. Change your change your mind. See the light. Walk in the light that that God is totally good, and that you are too. You're you're not born in sin. You're not utterly depraved. You're not a worm that God can somehow just barely stand to look at because you're covered with the blood of Jesus. No, change your mind about all of that. Yes. And our, our mind is powerful, as you well know. And, and when, when, uh, when God's spirit speaks to our spirit in us, to our, our heart, spirit, what, however we want to say it, you know, we get that and, and we know it. But our mind has got these thoughts that we've had before and our mind, it's like our mind fights our spirit and our mind says, well, no, that can't be right because my dad said, and he was a pastor or my Sunday school teacher said, or I've always heard this or it, all of those things. And now God is all powerful and God overcomes that in us. Um, but I, I, I don't pretend to say it's easy because those thoughts keep they keep coming up in our mind. I think that's what Paul talks about in Romans 12, too, of renewing our mind. And, and, uh, and then the fact that we have the mind of Christ, it's choosing to believe what Christ says, Christ in us, 
as opposed to those thoughts that we hear that have been programmed into our mind by well-meaning but misinformed people all of our life. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like, and I don't know if this is a good example or not, but it's kind of like buying a, a life insurance policy that the person selling it to you was very misinformed about uh, uh, the, the truth of what he was selling. And when it's time to use it, you found out that the policy was no good, not because you were misinformed, but because the person selling it to you was misinformed. Well, in this case, God has never been misinformed. And we're the ones who are misinformed because those who taught us were uh, misinformed. And I, I love that you brought up um, later on in uh, uh, verse seven, that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Uh, the mirror Bible says, uh, we are invited to explore the dimensions of the same light that engulfs God. Not, not a different light, but the exact same light, or in this case, the exact same understanding, the exact same mind. So when you begin to see God for who God is, that God is good, and, and yes, you're right, <laughs> you're right, God is good all the time, and somebody will holler back, uh, all the time God is good. And so they wrote songs about that. And it's easy to say, it's just like saying we walk by faith, not by sight, or as he is, so are we in this world. It's all of those things are truth, uh, but they become cliches without meaning. And so it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to experience. That's why I always have been saying for years that knowledge is greater than feeling. And so people will go to church and they get these Holy Ghost goosebumps that rise up on their flesh and their hair stands on in. And it's like, we had a great meeting today because I felt something. But can you go to a meeting and absolutely feel nothing in your human emotion and still know who you are, who your father is? And to me, that's real, a real essence of truth. Uh, the, the Mirror Bible goes on to say, when we see the light in his light, fellowship ignites in his light we understand how the blood of jesus christ is the removal of every stain of sin and i believe that should say every stain of mistaken identity in our consciousness the success of the cross celebrates our redeemed innocence and you know it's not that we weren't innocent before the foundation of the universe it's that we didn't know that and so isn't it amazing that christ comes to a place called the skull, okay? Uh, this place in the Greek was the, the, the uh, Golgotha, but in the Aramaic was the place of the skull, that God takes that image, the place of the skull, and most everybody sees a literal image of a skeleton head, a skull. Now, there are many pictures, many paintings that were rendered when they show the cross, they show stones, and at the base of the cross was a skull. And so whether this was that kind of a burial ground or not, or a place where maybe uh, uh, people's bones ended up uh, is immaterial. The fact is that that's, this metaphoric picture refers to the mind. He came to the place of our mind. Jesus didn't die because Jesus had to die for his own sake, but he died as us. He did what we couldn't do, and that was to open this portal that reconnected our mind back to his mind so that we could begin to realize that God is light, God is truth, God is love. And even as uh, we are the many-membered body of the one eternal Christ, we are a unified expression, even, even if we don't see a unified expression. Why don't we see a unified expression? Well, it's because people's thoughts are dark. Their thinking is dark. But in reality, that soul, uh, and I equate it this way, the scripture said uh, in uh, uh, Hebrews that, uh, that the word is sharper than any two-edged sword, uh, uh, dividing that which is soul and spirit. He's not separating soul and spirit, but cutting everything out that's in between, that takes the, 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 the spirit of your soul, the, the center of your soul, uh, the core of your soul that is renewed to God, and then the area of your soul that is unrenewed in its thinking. And there is a joining. I call that the, the marriage supper of the Lamb. 
Uh, there's a joining, a marriage that's taking place. Not that we're not already connected to God, but it's an awakening to a truth. All these pictures and metaphors in scripture is Christ as us, showing us that there is no darkness in Christ, no matter how much he was accused of darkness, no matter how he's preached today, uh, by many that says, look what Jesus did. Jesus chewed them out. Uh, I hear people today saying Jesus probably cussed them out. I hear all kinds of stuff. None of those portray the true image of Christ. He came as us to show us that we can walk in a human form and still be fully in a spirit form and walk in everything that he is with no darkness at all. Why? Because as you know full well, that's who our creator is. There's no darkness in our creator. So why would he, if you look at the Hebrew language uh, and follow it carefully, why would he mirror himself? And here we are, the mirrored expression of God. And now we've got darkness in it, even though God doesn't have any darkness in him. <laughs> and so he mirrored us Exactly. Do you know the Hebrew language says that how, how, the difference between us, uh, the creation and the creator, is the smallest measurement of distance that there is. Now, that's only enough to let me know that I have a creator. But when the creator looks at me, he doesn't see any difference because intimacy requires equality. And that's how he sees me as equal to himself. Oh, that boy, that's exactly right. And uh, gosh, you know, he came as an example of us. Uh, not uh, for us to try to to be like him. He came uh -huh. as an example of who we really are, uh, who we've always been before. Uh, you mentioned earlier uh, before creation, as as we learn in uh, Ephesians one. Uh, you, you know, God focused his the Trinity focused their intention on Doctor Bill and took as long a time as was necessary. They're above time, of course, but and you know, fashioned you and formed you and, and conceived you and thought about, you know, who you're going to be and gave you the talents and the abilities and desires and, and uh, uh, all of those things before you were ever born. And he did that. He did that with every one of us. I, I believe as, you know, Dr. K says uh, so eloquently and you and others that, that we, we were spirit beings mm -hmm. before we ever came to earth. We're here now, uh, spirit being slowed down to visibility but when we came to earth we we uh, forgot uh it's not that we were born in sin but uh we just forgot who we were and a big part of that was being told by other people who forgot who they were that were somebody that were really not and i think the the word sin sin's got a bad rap <laughs> uh it, yeah, as you well know, I mean, uh, harmartia means missing the mark, the pictures uh, of an archer shooting an arrow and it falling short. Well, I believe that that the sin of the world that Jesus took away, the sin is our missing the mark of who God really is and thus missing the mark of who we really are and not grasping that God is perfect and pure and, and pure love and light and joy and peace and goodness and grace. And so are we. And, and when we miss that mark, well, then we act out and we don't, we don't live like it. And those are acts of sin. Uh, they're, they're not, uh, uh, this, the sin itself is missing the mark of how good God is. And, I kind of got off on a rabbit trail there, but that's all right. It's what came to my mind. That's all right. Yeah. Well, you know, that's true. That is absolutely true. Uh, the things we see people do, for example, since we're on this rabbit tra trail, the things we see people do that displease us usually displease us because of a couple of reasons. One is because it's the way we were taught that something was wrong in our background. And then two is because we do see a, a lack of moral responsibility uh, as uh, in our, our world and how we treat one another and so on. But when we see people do wrong, we need to understand it's not because they are bad people. It's because uh, that they are uh, they are expressing something that came from 
their mistaken identity. In other words, they don't really understand who they are. So they're going to act out, as you put it so wonderfully, they're going to act out in ways that are, are not a true projection of who Father God is. And so all of that comes from identity. And, and uh, you're, you know, that's the thing I, I teach a lot on Adam uh, because Adam really did take on, you know, you know, this is so funny. God put Adam to sleep, but Adam never woke up. There's no scripture that says Adam woke up, but what woke up was Adam's consciousness. Now, Adam is the masculine gender and Eve is the feminine gender, the, the spirit and the suke, the soul woke up into a wrong identity. So they were still one, but they were two. That's why we are spirit, soul, and body. Even though we have three expressions, we're still one. And, and God didn't create us as three separate beings. He created us as one. Now, think about this. I've watched a lot of, I, I, I'm good with, I like sci-fi and, you know, space type things, Star Trek and so on. But when I look at various time uh, travel type programs, and I see that someone could be in the presence of someone else, but they can't be seen because they're, they're uh, operating at a warp speed type of uh, dimension and so they're there but you can't see them so if that person slows down from this place that we would think is invisibility and they slow down to the same speed as the person that's trying to find out who this person all of a sudden they become visible nothing changed about who they were they're still a spirit form being, but they simply slowed down to a place that the consciousness and the religious mindset of other people in human form can actually see them. Why is that? Is it so that we can act out and not project our father properly? No, it's so that we can impact those who have a improper idea or identity of who God is. And so I really love that because uh, it just speaks volumes to me that, you know, the Bible says that, uh, it, and here again, we refer to the Passion Translation, uh, that uh, we're operating on the, the, the thoughts and the actions of our own minds. And so mistaken identity produces actions that are from that identity. It's not that we mean to, it's not that we intended to, it's that we just didn't know. So I don't really get upset with humanity. You know, I mean, yeah, there was a time when I would go walk down the street or drive down the street and see something really despicable going on and have thoughts of judgment and thoughts of anger. And, and it's not that there aren't some things that still today wouldn't be worth maybe reporting to the authorities if we see an abuse going on or we see a, you know, a crime being committed. But the, the point is this, that it's not because that person just wholeheartedly wants to do that crime or do that wrong thing. It's that they're doing it because they don't have a proper a God identity within them that says God loves you and, and you're the expression of God. You're the mirrored reflection of God. And so people act out because of that. So that, that is such an important thing when we're talking about, you know, God is love. God is light. There is no darkness in him whatsoever. Therefore, there cannot be any darkness in you. So how do I know there's darkness in people? I see their actions and I judge their actions. Now, my judgment comes out of my own dark thoughts, but, but I see their actions, which come out of improper thinking because they don't know who they are. And so we really do need to take another look at the scriptures and take another look at what God did in mankind from before the foundation of the world, you know. Yeah, gosh, there, there's so many things that come to my mind as you say that. And um, what, what we have now, what the Apostle Paul had and, and John and, and others throughout the ages, what we have now is this understanding of what you just said. And we have the, I, I, I think of the great cloud of witnesses um, who are around us all the time, who are who are uh, in spirit form. They're not visible. Occasionally, God gives us the ability to see them. Um, but we have what the what that great cloud is doing is they're witnessing 
I believe what they're witnessing is what they now know to be true about God and about us. That's, that's the witness that they have, and they're cheering us on. They're wanting us to believe who God really is, who we are, and who everybody else is. Yeah. And we have the we have the great privilege, Bill, of participating with them and with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to help everybody come to that knowledge and that understanding, to hear that witness of who they really are. And and uh, you you can't legislate morality. You you can't uh, you can't shame people into changing their behavior i mean you can threaten them and maybe sure. people will change behaviors because they think they're going to get caught or go to jail for a long time or whatever uh and you know like with with the riots today and stuff if if the um authorities decide not to prosecute people well there's no fear so they're still going to do that so you you can change people's behavior uh with threatening and stuff but that's just changing the behavior. That's not changing the inside of them. Right. And to for for people to change, for us to change, for anybody to change, we have to first of all know who God really is, and then know who we really are, and know who God thinks we are, who who God believes that we are, and that's who He believes everybody is. And then once once we come to know that God is good and that we are good and so is everybody else but we've got this darkness in our mind then we can start seeing everybody as god does and we can start going no i, I don't want to i'm not going to i'm not going to hurt them or exclude them or judge them or take advantage of them uh, or whatever because you know god's god's not like that god doesn't like that and god's in me any thoughts that i have that that are not light are not his light but we, we get and then once we, I'm struggling to get words for this, but once we, once we know that, then everything changes with how we see ourselves, God, and everybody else. That, my friend, I think is the hope of the world. Christ in you, the hope of oh, glory. Yeah. Nothing else, nothing else is going to change us or anybody else or society or politics or government or anything until we know who God is, who we are, and who everybody else is. Amen. Amen. So true. You know, my, my wife, um, since you and I have talked last, published her first book. It's a children's book, and it's about helping children to deal with various types of fears. My wife has a philosophy that she said for years. She says, I've never met a bad child. Now, here's the thing. We know there's some what we would think are unruly children. Of course, children are often unruly because uh, what they're taught in their homes um, and so on. But, but she says, I've never met a bad child. And I've seen my wife actually take children who were deemed unruly and just love them and tell them that they're a good kid, tell them who they are. And that changed them. It wasn't behavior modification using threats to change a child, but it was actually imparting to them who their true nature is. And even when we really didn't understand the things we understand today, she still functioned that way. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's what father does to us. Now, the way father's message, uh, and, I, and I know you often refer to him as Papa, uh, and I love that, but, uh, but the, the way his message is conveyed to humanity is through people like us. Um, through, through ministers. So for that to happen, a minister then has to have a proper understanding of who God is. Uh, since we're talking about 1 John 1, 5, the Amplified Bible, which we know way back in the day, they attempted to take the King James and the Strong's Concordance and kind of blend them together to amplify what the King James was saying, because let's face it, even then there was not a lot of um, deep appreciation for the wording of the King James, and, and it certainly has been a ploy of distracting people from truth uh, through its misguided interpretation. But the Amplified, and, and then they came up with the Amplified Classic Edition. Um, and, you know, I can't really say all the time which one I like better. Uh, one is just the older version, and one is the updated version. But here's what the Amplified says. This is the message of God's promised revelation, which we have heard from him, and now announced to you that God is light, 
He is holy. His message is truthful. He is perfect in righteousness. And in him, there is no darkness at all, no sin, no mistaken identity, no wickedness, no imperfection. And so when you take a scripture like that, that's expanded, uh, expanded, uh, and I also love the expanded Bible, it really adds a lot of things, but, but when you take a scripture like that, and, and it's expanded in the way that it is, you, you do see who God is, but the thing we have to do is take this to another level and say, not only is this who God is, this is who God is in me. Therefore, uh, you, you know, remember, remember the thing that uh, in, in days gone by, we were told that if we rub shoulders with successful people, we would become successful. That was a business principle. Um, I was in insurance at one time trying to get away from construction before I was injured back in the day. And uh, we were taught in business school that rub shoulders with successful people, hang around successful people if you want to be successful. You know, we run shoulder, we rub shoulders with the creator of all humankind. We rub shoulders with God. Now, to really know that, now you've got to stop seeing yourself after the flesh and start seeing yourself as spirit. Even though I'm slowed down to visibility, I'm still fully spirit. So that means I'm exactly like my father and I'm rubbing shoulders with my father. And so I desire, I hunger for his, uh, the understanding of his mind and I embrace even the things of his mind I don't yet understand. I embrace them because I know that that's bringing me to a revelation of truth that is so phenomenal. It will revolutionize mm -hmm. my world. And as it does, it will also revolutionize other people's world around me because of the revelation. So I love that he calls this God's promised revelation because that's really mm -hmm. it. It's the revelation of the mind of the father. That's what I define revelation as the unveiling of the father's heart. Yeah. He's unveiling himself to us. All you got to do is listen. He, he's yeah. constantly giving and pouring out of himself. Constantly, yeah. And you know, those things that, that we don't understand yet, there's something that we can take to the bank about them. They're all good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're, they're all full of light. There's, there's no darkness. I, uh, you know, I, I've thought, uh, I, conversations I've had in the past, and I would guess you've had similar ones where, um, uh, you know, we try to convey to somebody our understanding of how, how good God is. And people will say, well, yeah, but he's, he's also wrath. He's all these kinds of things. And in, invariably, not 100% of the time, but a lot of the time, they'll go down to, well, you know, God's ways are higher than ours. Oh, yeah. So we, 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 he, you know, we just can't understand how he can be good and be full of wrath, too. <laughs> well, he's not. And that's those things that we don't understand. I'm going to err on the side of unconditional love and grace and pure light rather than go to, well, we can't understand. He, he's dark. He's not good. And we just can't understand that. But since he's good, we, we got to call that good anyway. And the, those types of arguments don't hold water with me anymore. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You, you know, uh, I, you, you, you caused me to think of um, uh, this, that I have a background in martial arts. Oh, really? Uh, yes, I, I actually uh, studied for uh, many styles as a, a younger uh, man. And then uh, after about 20 years, I got back into it. Uh, after I had had back surgery and was recovering, I, my, I didn't qualify for therapy any longer. So my therapist was a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. And so I started going to his school just to oversee my exercise. Really? But of course, with a background in martial arts, I couldn't just exercise, I had to get involved. So uh, I, w I had to quit. Uh, my body just couldn't take it after all I'd been through after I was testing for my first degree black belt. And I trained with, with swords and, and, and fighting sticks and, and, and et cetera. Uh, the, the thing I'm getting at is this, that uh, if you go into a match, whether you're doing um, uh, sparring uh, or, uh, or, or as competition, a fighter knows this. If I go into a match with any other mindset than seeing myself as the winner, Okay, I'm already defeated in my own self. And if I am, chances are I will absolutely lose the match. We, we, we go into this thing called life 
with this false concept of God. And we see ourselves as a failure. We see ourselves as separated. But once you come to know that God is pure light, God is pure love, and that in him there is no darkness at all. And if he resides in me as, as the source of, of, of me, uh, I absolutely have no darkness in me. Now, I do have some doubts. I have some unrenewed thinking that I have to repent, metanoia, change the way I think. And one of the definitions of it's either metanoia or the other word that's like it means to think differently afterwards. So after I come re, become renewed to truth, after I get the idea that God is love and, and he's in me and that's that makes me love, even though I'm not seeing all of it yet, it's still the truth. And you ever done that, that I, I'm seeing it and I embrace it and I'm excited about it. I don't fully understand it, but I, I, I do. And we do that. And, and, and I believe that because we're embracing that, we're embracing light. Okay. Now light expels darkness. It, it's, it's not that it's not that because there's darkness, it means there's the absence of light. Somewhere there is light. It may be the switch on the wall. It may be a, a, a flashlight switch, uh, maybe the light on your phone, but somewhere there is light. And as soon as light, the light of revelation is turned on, it's like there is no darkness at all. Uh, there's shadows of darkness. The Bible talks about God is not, uh, a, you know, a shadow of light. He's not, he doesn't, uh, not a variation of light. He is light. And so there may be a shadow somewhere that's saying, ah, there's the hint of darkness. It, it's creeping up on me, but it's really not because the more light I live in and the more understanding of truth I live in, the, the, the greater, uh, uh, the greater the threat is eradicated. And that's what I love about um, uh, when the Bible said that perfect love casts out fear there. I think there's a word there that could be translated as eradicated, that darkness is eradicated just because I understand that perfect love exists in me. Uh, Pastor Paul, I tell you, I may not be walking in it all yet. I may not understand it all, but I'm telling you, when you embrace truth and you just say, you know what, God, I'm going down this road with you. <laughs> I may not get it all right now, but I am committed to going down this road. You know, when the plane takes off, an air, a jet plane, you know, there is a point where they will say, uh, I don't know how they convey this to the tower, but it's called the point of no return. In other words, they can't just stop the plane. At that. They've got to continue with the flight, uh, at least to some degree. And uh, I feel like when you make that commitment to the Lord, to embracing his mind, you're at the point of no return. It's like, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I'm loving it. I don't understand it all yet, but man, I am committed to this. Uh, no wickedness, no imperfection in him, no darkness at all, no mistaken identity in him. And he conveyed that to me and brought me back to that reality so that I could walk the same as he walks. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. And that I, you know, I, I'm sure there are exceptions. I don't know of any though. People who uh, were were brought up in the darkness of uh, religion and mm -hmm. believing that God is uh, not all good. Once once that light, once we embrace that light, as you just said, there's no going back. I've never heard of or met or talked to anybody who has gone back into uh, embracing that darkness. Now there, there probably is somebody somewhere, but I, I've, I've never, I've never experienced anybody who's wanted to exchange the light for darkness. Right. Right. And, and I think that is such a powerful truth because I'm with you. I've seen so many people back in my, um, uh, traditional days, I'll put it that way, uh, who were up one day and down the next. If service Sunday was great, Monday was great. But if Sunday service was a blah or they couldn't make Sunday service, Monday was a disaster. And, you know, they did what we called backsliding. Now, I realize today that there is no such thing as backsliding per se. You may slide back in, uh, in and out of what you determined to be darkness. But the fact is, uh, when you, uh, when, when I would watch people who would be, uh, with God one day 
and without God the next day. It was simply because they believed they did something that God was mad at them about, and so they were on the outs. But I'm, I'll, be, I'll just, I, in this um, place we are today, this level of revelation, I've seen some misguided people. I've seen some concepts come out by, I'll just say grace people, even though I think there's variations of what people believe about grace. I've seen, I've seen some things come out that were completely, I believe, a misrepresentation of who the Father is. But I would say this, I've not seen people go back to uh, traditional Christianity type things. And, and I love that. I would rather see that even with the misguided, because let's face it, we were misguided a lot of times as we thought we were pursuing something and well, that was off. And so we get back on track and find the truth again. And we, we went through all of those phases and where we're at now, you know what? I'm confident if I get off track in my theology, I'm so tight with God. <laughs> I, I don't mean that in a braggadocious way, but I am so tight with my father that he's going to just lovingly show me the path. I'm just going to get right back on the truth. And, uh, you know, because there's no darkness in him, there's no darkness in me. I, I can't do anything but operate in light. And if it's just a variation of truth, it's just going to be a momentary thing. Uh, that's what Paul said that he said uh, that uh, when can you fall from grace? He talks about that. Well, falling from from grace in the Greek is just a momentary lapse of time. It just, it's just a split second. I got off track. Hey, I'm back. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it never was gone, but yeah, you understand what I'm saying. So yeah, this yeah. is so good. Uh, there's no darkness in us. Yep. I think, I think back what you were just saying, Bill, uh, when we first met, uh, a couple of years ago and then you started the uh, world bible school which like 17 months ago and now you've got 282 students which is just an amazing work of god i i just i think back over that time 17 months ago god has shown me things now that i didn't know 17 months ago about how how good he is about who we are about who everybody else is yeah. And uh, it just it just keeps getting better and better every day. So when when I look at somebody else, as, as you mentioned, and there certainly are teachers, whether uh, we call ourselves grace teachers or whatever, mm -hmm. we don't know it all yet. We don't have the full experience. We, we don't have we don't have the, the full enlightenment. We 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 have more enlightenment more truth more knowledge now than we had 17 months ago <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we were that we were bad then and I, i'll go as far to say if 17 months from now if you and i don't have an even deeper experience of god's light and love and and uh goodness uh it, it's not his fault <laughs> that we don't it's it, uh it, it's well whatever uh we're just we're, we're always growing yeah absolutely Absolutely. And, and, you know, uh, that that's true. Um, where I was 17 months ago, and then if we want to use 17 months as the time measurement, even 17 months before that, and 17 months before that. And, you know, it's like, it's like I've been teaching the book of Revelation on Wednesday mornings for uh, this coming Wednesday will be uh, the lesson number 180. And I'm in Revelation 21, and I'm so loving Revelation 21 because Isaiah nailed it when he said that God declares the end from the beginning. That's exactly what I'm seeing. But the point is, is that even in 180 lessons, you take 52 weeks in a year, that's about three and a half years of teaching. When you look at that, I would love to go back to Revelation 1 verse 1 and start over again because I've learned so much that uh, even though I'm, 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 I'll stand by my teachings from back then, still there's some things that need to be clarified and further elaborated on uh, that I've learned. And so that's what I'm doing with that. Uh, even taking it now, we've done an associate course with the first five chapters of the book of Revelation. And, and, uh, and it, it's different than it was when I was teaching it week by week. And then we've done an associate uh, bachelor course with the second uh, five uh, weeks, lessons a week, chapters six through 10, and so on. And we're moving on to the master and doctorate program. But the point is, is that if we're not continually learning, then what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know what Pastor Paul is teaching? That's not the way I learned it. 
And 30 years ago, I learned it this way, and that's the absolute truth. And I'm not going to very bear from that. And so we get stuck in a rut. And folks, we all know this little cliche that a rut is simply a grave with both ends kicked out. I mean, <laughs> don't don't be stuck there. Uh, let's move on to a higher uh, level of thinking, a higher realm of truth. Uh, 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 set your mind, set your thinking on things above a higher realm of truth and not be stuck on the things that are of a worldly mindset or an earthly mindset. Yeah. Good. That's great. Boy, this, this hour's flown by, Bill. My gosh. What it has. Good time. It has. And Pastor Paul and I are going to be back next week uh, with part two and continuing on uh, talking about how that there's no darkness in our father, that God is love, God is light, and just to be a blessing to you out there. This is my last broadcast for the week, unless I get time to do an impromptu broadcast over the weekend. I'll be back with Tuesday, our panel discussion with Wednesday, the book of Revelation on Take Another Look. Uh, next Thursday, Pastor Sheila Watts is gonna be with me. Uh, and then Friday, Pastor Paul and I'll be back. So, so good. Pastor Paul, thank you so much. It's been a while since we've connected. Thank you so much for being on with me and doing this series with me. My pleasure, my privilege. It's been a delight. Amen. Amen. Same here. Hey, everybody, if you would uh, just click like and click share and let other people know about this conversation going on. We appreciate all of you watching. And uh, I'll just say this. Have a great rest of your Friday. If you're in the USA, it's morning time for you. And have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you next time on one of our shows. All right. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.